Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Shamel Bell, and you are here with my Harvard and Dartmouth student organizers and the amazing Dominique Fishback. And so I'm going to have my class welcome in the welcome bomb that we do. So unmute your mics and five, six, seven, eight. Welcome. Welcome. Um, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much 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 for coming. Thank you my my eyes, my cheeks are hard and my eyes are watery. So well, you you just don't understand. You have so much more that's gonna come for us. So much love that you know we just want to extend to you. We are so grateful to have you here with us. Um, another thing that we do in my class, it this obviously is not a typical class. Um, the purpose of our class is to have artists, activists that are out in the world, really wanting to do things to shift society towards change we have them to come inside of our classroom, right? So it's not about enough for us to read the theory in these Ivy League classes. You are the theory, you are the history, you are embodying that history that they are now learning. So that's why you are the guest lecturer here and we are here to learn from you. And so something that we do to start out is we do radical embodied check-ins. And what that looks like we all unmute at the same time because we want all voices heard. And often you hear people say, hi, how are you? And that's it, you know, but we wanna know how you're really, really doing. And sometimes you may not wanna be so vulnerable, but then if there's everyone being vulnerable at the same time, you might be able to let it out together, right? But then there's a catch to this. I'm a dancer choreographer. So I'm gonna ask you what your favorite social dance move is now. There's another catch. We are all about affirmations in this classroom. Everything is about having a safe, well, we, off, we can't offer a safe space in an institution, but what I can offer through unconditional love is a healing container. And what we can offer in, that, in this space is an affirmation. So for me, I'm gonna give you an example. This is our radical and body check-in. So it's like, hi, I'm Dr. Shamel Bell. Um, my pronoun is sis as in, what's up sister? Or they, she, whatever. I'm on sacred Tomba land. This is South Central Los Angeles where Nip is from. You can hear them in the background. Don't worry about an ambulance if it comes by. My, uh, I'm feeling great right now, overly lit. My favorite dance move is I am love. I am love, I am love, I am love. And so that's what the radical and body check-in looks like. Are you ready, Dominique? As I'm going, but we're all doing this together, yeah? We're doing this together, but you, you're the guest. So I just want to make sure you got it all together. Okay. We ain't yeah. going to leave you behind. No person left behind. All right, so I'm going to say five, six, seven, eight. And then we're gonna have everyone unmute their mics and we're gonna say our names, pronouns, how we're feeling, but most importantly, get an affirmation out and that will be the soundtrack. You know how you have no music. That is your affirmation. Hey. Right, all right, all right. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna say five, six, seven, eight. And five, six, seven, eight, and go. Okay. Hey, <laughs> Oh, that's so fun. See, it's fun, isn't it? It's fun. It's fun. I like that. Yeah. yeah. You're right. It's kind of fun. All right. So the next thing we do, we always ground our class in breath. So the root of the word conspire together means to breathe together. So conspire means to breathe together. Mm -hmm. And so we always take a moment and it may be a little selfish of me because I'm a really deep empath. So I feel everybody's energy even through the computer. 
And so I always, when my students come in, I'm like, woo, all right, let's take a breath. And so we all kind of ground ourselves in the moment. And so what I'm gonna do is have our production um, folks put on our, it's called the Insight Timer. And there's an amazing um, group called Beautiful Chorus. Oh, I know, I love them. They got Hey Queen. And yes! yes, I play them every single class. And so I we do them. Yes, okay, so we're about to, have you heard Hymn of Healing? Yes, yes. I just like a couple of days ago. Yes, all right, so Hymn of Healing is about to start. And what, basically what we're gonna do right now, um, when we're talking about collective freedom dreaming, my mentor Robin D.G. Kelly wrote this book called Freedom Dreams that have sh that shifted my entire life. And when we think about freedom dreams, something that I ask my students to do is not always think about what we want to dismantle or what we already lack. You know, we're always talking about, oh, we need to change this in society and we want to dismantle this and we want to destroy this. But what I like to ask my students is like, what is it that you want to shift? And what are the skills that you already possess and the talents that you already have in order to shift? But the next step is, do you feel it in your body? Because that's the key to manifesting anything that you want, is to already feel it in your body. And so we're going to go through a little exercise. And I'm going to ask the production team to listen to us when we're done, because we're not going to go this. Um, the hymn of healing is eight minutes. We're not going to do eight minutes. We're going to do probably like, you know, maybe four. Um, but what we're going to be doing, I'm going to show, if you can look at me, we're going to rub our hands together at a certain point. And we're going to place it the first time on our hearts and we're going to open up our heart spaces and find where we're going to be shifting. And then we're going to find what skills we're doing at the moment. And then the final thing we're going to do is like to feel it in our bodies and actually bring ourselves there. You may not see it because you may not be clairvoyant where you can see it, but you may be able to feel like the sun on, on the back of you or something like that. And with that, you may know where you're at. If you know that you feel sand under your toes, you're at the beach, you know what I'm saying? So just bring that picture up. And that's our meditation for today. Thinking about the freedom dream, what we would wanna shift, what kind of skills you have, and then what kind of um, senses, where do you feel? What do you see? What do you smell? All that, is that clear? All right, y'all. So I'm gonna have everyone close your eyes and I'm gonna ask the production team to put on the meditation track. And I'm gonna get closer so you can hear me. <sighs> All right, everyone, can you follow your natural breathing? Imagine a bubble of protection around yourselves. My son once said, if I'm breathing in all the positive and breathing out all the negative around people, am I breathing in their negative? So we're gonna put a bubble of protection around. Think of that shift. Where are you? during that shift in society. I am a being. Are you walking with family on a beach? And I want you to rub your hands together. Rub your hands together and place it on your heart. Now this is the space of unconditional love. What are the skills do you have in the space of your shift? Are you the cook? Are you teaching the kids in the village? Finally, what are the senses you have in this space? You smell the ocean breeze. You hear birds chirping.
take one deep breath in together on three. One, two, three, breathe in and release all that doesn't serve that. And finally, I want you to fully embody this shift. Where are you during this shift? What skills do you possess? Feel all the senses in your body. Now you're gonna rub your hands together, rub your hands together. Now this time you're gonna rub it and on three, you're gonna open your eyes and place them in front of the camera on three. And then you're gonna lock eyes with whoever you see in the camera on one, two and three, lock eyes. You're sending that unconditional love of your shift to the person that you lock eyes to. Now one more time, let's rub it and we're gonna find one more person. And one, two, and three. Some of you may feel tingling in your hands if you're really sensitive. I see some of you all smiling. I feel the energy from you all. And then you can release and the production team can turn it down. Thank you so much for doing that. How was that, Dominique? Uh, it's great. I meditate a lot. It's, okay. um, yeah, it's actually something that I came into like uh, practice with uh, right before Project Power came out last summer. And it's been a real gift to me. So any chance I get to do it in my day and to to know that other people, especially young people, are doing it too is is great. Listen, you already have beautiful course. You already meditate. You know, you can come and just teach my class anytime you want to. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be really formal. So I always stutter through these bios, just so you know, and I've really figured out why. It's because I know the bio is not who you are. To me, you are just an incredible light. And so I always like for people to tell me who they really are. Um, but I am, as in an academic space, going to read your bio. And if I stutter through it, just know it's because these words do not even just, it, words cannot fathom who you are. So Dominique Fishback is a multi-hyphenate talent whose work has established her as an actress, spoken word poet, and writer on the rise. Alongside Daniel Kalua and Lakeith Stanfield, Fishback stars in the critically acclaimed Judas and the Black Messiah. Based on true events, the story centers on Fred Hampton, chairman of the Illinois Black Panther Party, and Willem O'Neill, the undercover FBI informant whose betrayal led to Hampton's assassination. Fishback gives a breakout performance as Deborah Johnson, a fellow Black Panther member, Hampton's girlfriend and mother of his child. The film is currently in theaters and available on HBO Max. Dominique talks to um, the New York Times about her Black Panther love story. There's a link that we will put in the chat. Last year, Fishback co-starred in the Netflix original superhumor, a superhero film Project Power with Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Other film projects include HBO The Deuce opposite James Franco and Maggie Gyllenhaal and 2008 award-winning The Hate You Give, which I met you at, my brother George Tillman Jr. directed. And Fishback is also a skilled spoken word poem and playwright. Subverted her 90-minute one-woman review uh, one, more, one woman spoken word poetry performance debuted off, off Broadway in 2014 to rave reviews. Written as her senior thesis, the production explored black identity and existence in a system rooted in inequality from 20 different viewpoints and garnered Fishback a New York Time, uh, New York Innovative Theater Award nomination for outstanding solo performance. Fishback was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, where she currently resides. Everyone, again, unmute your mic. You know, I said you're not going to get used to this. Five, six, seven, eight. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. Without further ado, how many Fishback? You are the professor now. Oh, OK. 
Okay. Uh, where do I even begin? I'm having like, um, what I really wanted to do was learn how to be present in my life. I think a lot of times, especially in a, a career for acting where everything is like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? I don't know that I've often allowed myself to just be and exist. Um, and now for, I think for the first time, really, I think it started with, with, uh, Project Power, but, um, for the first time, really, I'm allowing myself to be present and to um, receive a lot. And so I don't know where to, to even begin. Um, I love the I love the idea of the class is freedom. Is it dream freedom? What is it? Freedom Dreams by Robin yeah. D.G. Kelly. It's a book, but we do collective freedom dreaming here. Yeah. Freedom dreaming. I like that because um, I oftentimes will give uh, a year, I give the year a name. So in 2018, I was like, oh, it's my CEO year because I had to make hard choices in my career to like move from different teams and all that kind of stuff. And I was really emotional about it. I was like, am I disloyal? But no, that is, it's like business, you know? So I was learning how to navigate that in a way. And then, so I made, um, that was in 2017. So 2018, I was like, this is going to be my CEO year. I'm going to step into my power. Though. And then by the end of 2018, I'm filming Project Power and I'm extremely depressed. And I don't know why, because all of my dreams are coming true. I'm working with Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon Levitt. They're amazing. I'm in this hotel room that's bigger than my apartment. And it's essentially my dreams come true. So I'm wondering why am I feeling like this? And, um, and uh, I had this talk with God, with self, and and realized that I had to find stuff that I wanted to do that I didn't need anything earthly from. And when I say earthly, meaning like acting, I love it, but now it's also to pay my bills, right? So what are the things that I've always wanted to do that I don't need anything from, but just to do it, that just my, my soul could be at peace. And it was music. And, um, um, Ever since I was a kid doing spoken word poetry, everybody's like, oh, you rap? No, I don't rap. But I always wanted to play piano and put my spoken word to music and do that. And I've gotten many opportunities in my life to do that, but I always shied away from it. So in 2018, I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna really pay attention to piano and learning it. And then um, I made 2019 my spirit year because I felt like my CEO year lacked spirit. <laughs> and, uh, and I started doing music and really spirit came to me in a way that uh, like shook me because I didn't understand. Right. Uh, and, um, and then I got Judas and the black Messiah and I went to, uh, Cleveland to film with them. And I was, um, I was, uh, I felt so safe that I was open to, uh, my spirit felt so safe that I was open to a different way of being, of existing. I didn't realize that I had developed a hard shell because of where I come from, because of the experiences that I've had, that although I often led with all heart and, and love, there was still a part of me that didn't really know how to be soft or didn't know that I was, wasn't being soft. Um, or the idea of being soft didn't feel like something I wanted to do, especially around men. And, um, and my cast and my crew really allowed me to feel safe. And today is Dane's birthday, Dane Kaluuya. It's his birthday today. And so I just want to shout out him and how he really, um, uh, he really was my, my partner in, in crime or my partner in love in this, in this story to um, bring to life Chairman Fred Hampton and uh, Mama Okua, formerly known as Deborah Johnson's love story. Um, and he really, created a safe space for me to, to be myself. And I realized with my cast and crew that, oh, this is unconditional love. I remember having that, that moment where I said, oh, this must be unconditional love because they don't need anything from me. They just want me to be, I'm just allowed to exist. And um, I left Cleveland forever changed and um, looking for freedom. So I made 2020 my, my freedom year or my freedom year. And I thought I was going to be able to, to travel. I thought that, you know, I had all of these plans. And then we got locked down and it was quarantine. And, and um, but it was a gift in a way because I really started meditating during that time. And I realized that freedom was all in the mind. And we 
when you get control over your mind, then you, you start um, excavating a lot of things that you didn't know were buried underneath and you start to find freedom. Um, and so I really love the name of you know the class or the, the book and what you guys are doing. And um, yeah, I, I that's why I'm really excited about meditation because it really has helped me. Astrology as well, learning how to read my my chart. <laughs> like I, I'd say this like it's bigger than just oh what's your sun sign I'm Aries. No, there's there's something called a north node, right? And a north node is your soul's purpose. And um and so when I remember one night, it was like a couple, it was like a month or so before Project Power and I couldn't sleep and my spirit woke me up and said, learn how to read your chart. So I went on YouTube and I started learning how to read my chart. And, um, and, I, and I woke up in the morning and started writing things down. And what really got me into it was the North Node, the idea that wherever that is in your chart is where you're supposed to be in order to reach your soul's purpose. And it, it gave direction, you know, all of the planets have have um effects and a lot of times we don't like to, to think that way but I, I said I explained this to my, my my sister in a way I said um why is it that we believe that man-made things technology all these things could make us sick could work whatever could have an effect um being in a in a box in an office can have an effect on our spirit on our on our health but we don't think that the the moon and the planets do. You, like that to me is like it's kind of baffling. Like the things that yeah, we all the time we are the same. <laughs> and the same thing, like we're we're mostly water, and people don't think the moon cycle, which the tides affected by the moon. I'm just like, what are we talking about here? Yeah. Yes, yes. So I started really like tapping in, or that Venus is the the planet of of love, and where it falls in your chart is where. You, is is who you might attract or how you are in love and in relation and so it allowed me to get a um more in-depth of who i am and also i i used to be like kind of afraid to like learn things like oh is my chart gonna say this but no, but it's all just a tool there's nothing there's nothing like set in stone it's just oh if i tend to be um more emotional in this area in my life is because there's something called a chiron and the Chiron is the soul, the soul wound, and is is what we have to heal in our in our lifetimes. You know what I'm saying? So there, it was just a lot of, and I was tapping into that and and meditating and journaling so much. I journaled since I was 12, but then all of a sudden I was journaling so much that summer, learning about love, unconditional, and learning where I have fears in love and romantic love, and and these ideas and what society has put on us that I no longer believe. And I read a book um, in October. I read a book called The Four Agreements um, that Daniel Cooler actually suggested that I read because I was going through yes, yes. a hard time. My aunt, my aunt had uh, passed away from cancer like three weeks after Project Power came out. And that was really hard because it, it was the idea that I had this super high experience and at the same time, such a, a deep loss. Um, and so it, it, so meditation and I do divine feminine baths. I call them divine feminine baths. Yes. Cool. Yeah. We need to have a whole conversation. After yeah. This. And my students are going to laugh because they hear so much of this. Like, as you can see what my classroom is like, they see so much of this all the time and hear so much about this, the divine feminine, divine masculine, balancing that unconditional love. We read a book called, if you haven't read Bell Hooks, All About Love Yet, I'm gonna send it to you. Uh -huh. Yes, so we are so much aligned and in tune. So don't just keep going, cause my yeah. students are like, I can still talk about this all the time. The Cat has the book, huh? Yeah. Yes, yes. And then be impeccable with your word. Be impeccable with your word. They were like, yes. Four. Yeah, it was, uh, what is it? It's um, uh, like, don't take things personally. Yes, nothing that anyone says or does is about you. Yeah. Yes, honey. That was big. Mm -hmm. me. And it was even to the point where he said, even the good, even the good stuff, right? And so um, I'm learning how to balance and, and receive words and I remember I was in this artist um this artist class and my teacher used to say um when people say when people say these things about you kind things or whatever that resonate or inspire you think about it as the universe 
kind of like t- like telling you, right? So all along, people been saying since I was a kid, oh, you should try rapping, or you should try put it, and I've never done it. And it, I keep getting opportunity after opportunity to do it, and I keep ignoring it. And then it got to the point where I had to be depressed in a hotel room, essentially living my dream to say, oh, there's other there's other things. And I don't know how many of you saw um, Jamie's uh, movie Soul, right? But like yes, the, yes. <laughs> the idea that your soul's purpose is not the same as your gift, right? Like that was, I said, oh, that makes, that actually makes a lot of sense. And so the idea of alignment is dope. I mean, even getting, even down to getting uh, Deborah Johnson and Judas and the Black Messiah, I had been, I said, if Hollywood's not gonna cast me as a romantic lead, I'm just gonna write my own. And um, and so I was writing a kind of Romeo and Juliet, Black Panther party as romance called Gwendolyn and say cool. And I was reading a book called The Taste of Power by Elaine Brown, who was a Panther in the in the Oakland chapter. And uh, I get this email that Shaka King wrote this role and he, you know, he's doing it with Daniel Lakeith and that he wants uh, to meet me. And then Shaka tells me, hey, I wrote this role for you. And um, how did he know? You know what I'm saying? So it really told me alignment was real, manifest- wow. manifestation is real. The universe is listening. It was no way that I could know or he could know that we were uh, moving along the trajectories in our, in our lives. And I posted something on my story today on Instagram because uh, I do a lot of the, the 10 years, the memories on Facebook. So I posted them because one of them was uh, I keep seeing these previews for movies and uh, I, I, I get so annoyed because I'm, I want to be in I'm, I want to be in movies and I don't know what to do next to get me there. And that was 10 years ago today, I wrote that. And uh, yeah, and it was mo- other stuff like eight years ago where I said, you know what, I'm just gonna focus on a craft because you know, I, uh, um, nobody's gonna be able to say she can't act. Even if they don't like me, they can't say she can't act. Like I was gonna make sure that I was, I was good with my, with my craft. And so we are, manifest- we are manifesting. Um, it's not, I don't, I'm not gonna say it's easy because it is, it is retraining and, um, and deprogramming what we've been taught to believe. And that can be really hard. But I think the thing is like, people talk about transcending the ego, right? And what does that even mean? And I was dealing with that a lot, was spirit versus ego. And um, I'm still deciphering, but they say that spirit is is quiet and ego is, is the one. And ego doesn't have to be, ego is just trying to protect you. So it could try to protect you from the good stuff and it could try to pe- protect you from what it what it perceives to be as not so good. Um, Beautiful. And egos often sometimes in the past or the, pre- or the future, a lot of times spirit is really present. So if something was like, you can't do that, you can't, or you remember when you messed up, you're like, nah, that's not present. Or, you know, you're not going to be able to win that award. You know, that's not, no, that's the future. They like, that's not true. We are, you know what, you better preach. Go ahead. Let's, go ahead, professor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I have chills. I have chills. Um, um, yeah, so I don't know. So I just been, I've been, um, so I did, oh, I, I saw somebody kind of make the confused face when I said divine feminine baths. And so I just want to, I want to call that back is literally just taking, just like running the water. I like to use lavender bubble bath. I love lavender. I have an oil. Oh, roses. I have, <laughs> right. I, I haven't done the roses yet. I think I am. I, I'm gonna, rose petals. <laughs> I'm gonna, I got some, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that tonight. Um, but uh, uh, using um, uh, essential oils and like the oil diffuser and this lavender as well, candles. And I have a playlist, a divine femininity, femininity playlist. Um, and also I have, sometimes I just listen to gospel songs. It really is dependent on the mood. Or sometimes I listen to reggae, right? <laughs> it just depends, whatever, whatever it is that. Do you ever put crystals around your... Uh... Yes. Let me tell you, I have brought, this is my box of crystals. I don't know why I brought it outside earlier, but they're all out here. And I, I didn't know what it was for. I'm like, I'm not going to show my students the crystals, but there's all kinds of like amethyst and selenite and rose quartz and, you know, all of these crystals. And I, I brought it out here for you. Thank you. you know, Thank I don't you. know why. I, I've never like really shown my, my students the crystals, but yes, this amethyst is here just looking at us wow. so i'm gonna put our my little crystals out right now as we talk because 
this is a definite like coming together of the divine feminine. You over here looking for your crystals too? <laughs> You like I have, to, I have to get more. They were like gifted to me, and now I'm I'm coming into a more understanding about them. And that was the other thing, you know, in my spirit year in, in 2019, I I kept feeling like I was getting like downloads, right? And I would say downloads, but I didn't know what that word meant. I felt like the ancestors, I felt like spirit was talking to me, and it wasn't like I'm hearing voices. Absolutely, it would be like like I would go into Barnes and Noble, and something would bring me to the to crystals. And I got a book on crystals and then, or um, justice or, you know, Fred Hampton or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden I'm looking, I took a picture of my bed cause I laid all the books out and I was like, I don't know what this means, but it's telling me something. I have no idea. But um, what I'm learning now is like, we don't have to know. We don't have to have the answers. And that's kind of hard. Cause I'm always like, okay, so you told me something, what that mean? How, how is it going to unfold? Let me vote. <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying to be more like, okay, I, I clock it, I notice it, I receive it, and now I'm going to uh, keep moving. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now in my, in my life. Uh, I feel really fortunate. I feel uh, at peace. And it's, it's strange because a lot, like, I don't know how many times you, you, like, you would never know how many times I keep hearing, yo, you're, you're a light, you're a light. And, and I'm trying to, and I get like, because, um, because I never really, because I'm from East New York, you know, I'm from East New York, I'm from Brooklyn. I went to high school in Brownsville. And I always felt like I was um, trying to lead by heart, but it just felt like every time I put my heart out there, I was getting like knocked down. So I feel like I keep going like this. And at certain points, I'm like, am I doing this wrong? Am I not learning a lesson? And um, uh, I have great people in my life that kind of told me to, to stay, stay true to who I am. I am love. And I think that even, even in the way in which I get to talk about Judas and the Black Messiah, and I get to talk about the love that I experienced that I felt with my cast and crew, and um, I remember us, we kind of did this uh, live. It was like me, Shaka, Daniel, Lakeith, uh, the Lucas brothers, and we were all doing this live for like the critics choice. And we were so comfortable with each other. I think it was, or writers, whatever, right? One of them things, I don't know. Uh, there's so many, like a blur. Uh, but we were so comfortable with each other that we just like laughing, like we forget it's live and we just having conversations with each other. And then at the end, I'm just like, love you guys. And then I love you too, love you too, love you too. And, and we just like get off the live. And I and it really like shook me in a positive way because that's what we really need. We need to not be afraid to say I love you and to to say this person has has helped me grow and, and change my life and to know that everybody's playing a part. You know, so so just because I say this about one person doesn't take away from the other people in my life that have filled in different different parts and I'm and I'm starting to to learn that and appreciate that. So uh that's my that's my little spiel that's for today. Telling. That was so beautiful and it's so interesting. Yesterday um in our class we did um I don't know if you've ever heard of Who's Streets. It's a documentary um by Sabah and Damon Davis um uh and it's a, based on the Ferguson uprising. And it's like a documentary and folks that are really on the ground. And so um, Tef Poe and Samora Penderhughes was in my class yesterday. And I remember our Harvard TA, Christina, was just like, there was so much love between you all. And that's exactly what I hear from you and your castmates. And that's exactly what I would like for our class. That's why it's collective freedom dreaming. The most important thing I always tell my students is you can't show up for anybody if you can't show up for yourself in unconditional love. Because we're meeting each other with our trauma, right? And so if in my classes, I'm trying to create an opportunity and a space for us to feel vulnerable enough to dare to have the audacity to love ourselves and then therefore be able to love someone else. We have to be able to show that to each other and that's how we're gonna get more free, yeah. right? One of the most important things that I always say is some people do not want true freedom or liberation. They just don't wanna be oppressed. Mm -hmm. Those are widely different things, mm -hmm. you know, and in and, and, and my heart, and what my students um, yesterday, they're so cute. They were talking about like 
um, me being the physical embodiment of freedom. And I was like, mind blown, I'll never forget that. And then another student made me a heart and was saying that I was the physical manifestation of love. And if you're not talking to the people that you're organizing with like this, or that you're creating these artistic people, or artistic performances that are the shift, then what are we doing? And one of the Black Panthers taught us to, if we're, not, if we're always critiquing and we're not critiquing in love, then that's really not a critique, right? If we're not looking at our own self, anytime we have to accuse someone, ego, you brought it up earlier, and not just like our ego versus like what's ourself, but actually like who our, our, our false, sometimes we have false humility and those types of things. So when is it that our ego gets in the way with freedom. Our ego often gets in the way of like personality flaws is a reason why you can't, you know, um, partner with someone in their collective fr freedom dream, right? So I just welcome you to this class and this space. You, it's like you, you've always been here, right? I'm sitting here and, and this idea, I wonder what you um, feel about this idea of oneness, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's something that I have been kind of, um, I want to say grappling with, but I've tapped in so much to this, you know, the balance of my divine masculine and my divine fem feminine kind of created a union where I've tapped into a oneness where my students think I'm creepy. Like how <laughs> no stuff will happen. And they're like, Dr. Bell, how did you know? Or, you know, I'll say something and they're like, well, actually today I was writing it every day, all day. Right. And it's sometimes it's good because I'm open. I know I'm an open vessel to be able to receive it. I'm like, yes. But then sometimes I take on the energy of others. So especially in this movie, where it's Judas and the Black Messiah, how have you because I know that you've tapped into oneness because I see myself in you. Um, it's great for us to re recognize this one consciousness, right, this oneness. But how do you separate and create boundaries? within other people's energy. And then also stuff, some stuff ain't even our business, right? You know what I mean? Like, what that person got going on. Yeah, but I was talking to my therapist about this today. Because <laughs> I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to balance. It's also like, like, um, I have a huge family. I'm, I'm one of 19 grandkids. Yeah, my grandmother was one of 19 herself. And that's just on my mom's side. My mom was one of seven. So there, you know, there's a lot of us. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of, um, and, uh, and then there's, there's East New York. There's Brooklyn. There's all of the people that I grew up with that I know and that I love. And, um, but also being like, oh, I, I can't go over there like that anymore. That is, that was, that's weird. <laughs> that's weird because, um, it's not, it's not even that somebody is, is doing anything, but it's also about protecting your energy and protecting, you know what I'm saying, where, where you are. And there's just certain things that I can be triggered by, my, by the block I grew up on or the block that I've seen somebody get shot on. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just things there that have affected me that I'm like, oh, maybe in this part, in, in this time of my life, I don't have to go and be. And sometimes it's scary to, to not go, feel like you're not going back. And so you force yourself to go back, which is not good. You know what I'm saying? And I haven't, I haven't done that. I uh, naturally for Project Power in August, I got to do a private um, screening of it in East New York. And it organically happened where I got to be with people that I hadn't seen in a long time and uh that i that i grew up with and that was great for what what it was and god allowed me to go to go back or go there and to to be in community like that but i don't have to do that all the time and i have to allow myself to know i don't have to do that all the time which is which is hard right um and then uh but getting to come to to talk to to classes like that like that's that's something i've always done since I, my mom, my mom was a school teacher in East New York for 31 years. So I used to come and do spoken word to her classes. And then her coworkers used to find out that I was there doing spoken word. And then I'd be making rounds to all the classes, doing poems to all the kids. And then, and then my old high school teacher would have me come to their schools. Or when I was doing a Hate You Give, 
um, my my sixth grade teacher who I love to this day, she moved to Georgia and she wanted to know if I could come talk to her, her the sixth grade class. And I went, you know, and so I'm there's ways in which we can still have oneness where we don't have to, you know what I'm saying? And then there's the ways which you, you come home and you meditate or you take a bath or you watch the vampire diaries or new girl. <laughs> Yeah, the bath. Oh, you, you talked about the bath. And one of the things with the energy that's really important is that, you know, I often, even when I wake up in the dream space in the astral, like some of that stuff is like, you need to rinse that off in the morning. And then also taking a bath and actually watching the energy of other people kind of walk wash away and it's so funny i i don't know why i have i found my rose petals right here so you can you can uh that that's a message for you like little dried up rose petals at the you know what store. right before right before you said that i was like rose petals right before you showed me the rose petals i said rose petals and i started looking at the petals because i'm like i'm thinking about this bath that i'm gonna put the rose petals in for the first I'm time i'm telling you if we're not like proof of telepathy and what I'm like, why am I picking up these rose petals? What is going on? I don't, why am I being weird? Stop picking up these rose petals. But this is the thing, like if you don't open up your mouth, the other person won't understand. And, and, you'll, like, and you'll feel alone, you know, you'll feel alone. Cause I, I was feeling alone. Like, am I, am I bugging? Like what's happening to me, you know? And then because I, I talk to, to people, I talk to my friends and, and oh no, I'm not alone. Or even like uh, you said something that sparked something for me that I, oh, why am I being weird, right? I had to stop saying that to myself, right? But I realized that I was, I was saying that to myself while I was filming Judas because, you know, I prayed um, to be a vessel for the, for the energy and for the story to, to go through. And so by the time we got to, I don't know, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it's- Yeah, that's why I wasn't talking about it too much, but you could say whatever, they should have seen it by now, go see it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even if you didn't see it, we know that Chairman Fred Hampton was assassinated by the FBI, right? And uh, the character that I play, she was there and she's his fiance and the mother, she's nine months pregnant. So um, by the, by, the end of filming when we actually had to film that scene, it ended up being on the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Chairman Fred. Um, and so the energy was really like heavy there. And I remember the night before I couldn't sleep. I was like, my stomach was in knots. I kept having this feeling that something bad was gonna happen. And I'm like, what is going on? Then I realized, I said, oh, nothing bad is gonna happen to Daniel. Right, I had prayed to be a vessel. And so now that I prayed to be a vessel, that story is in me. Right, and now we have to shoot this, film this scene where this man is assassinated, where he actually in real life taught me how to trust in a different way. Right, which, which um, held space for me in a way that I hadn't known. So now I am kind of essentially losing that because we have, we're gonna be done filming. We thought, oh, we'll be able to promote the movie together, all of us, and now we're not. So it, it was a loss in, 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 in certain ways. But I remember that that day, I felt like wherever he was moving, I was kind of like trailing, like tracking him a bit. Like, and I was like, dumb, you're being weird. Like I was having commentary on myself. Like I, my body was instant, like organically doing things, but my, my, my ego, because it didn't know, was saying, oh, you're being weird. Mm. You just spoke to me right now. The clock is at 444 in Los Angeles. <laughs> so I just want you to know that. Um, I definitely want you to show me any, if you, are you wanting to do the poem that you did that was so powerful? Um, it, if you want to, you can. Um, but also there's um, something in me that would love to hear, and maybe we can do this offline, your work with inner child, with your inner child, you know, um, your work, what what you about to look? You know, actually, it, it came into my spirit. Oh my gosh! Uh, so I did a so I did, and I haven't practiced it in days. But I did a my own cover of "Song Cry" by Jay Z. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, I hadn't been putting my spoken word to music, but I I did it. And um, my heart's beat really fast now, uh, so I'm gonna do it for y'all. Uh, but. Also, when you said you said inner child, and I think that whole song is about my work with my inner child. Um, I have to, I have to rearrange things a little bit. So no do, worries, no I'm, worries. I'm gonna mute myself because it might. It's all good. 
All right, so class, how y'all feeling? <laughs> I, I'm looking at y'all, y'all like. <laughs> my new my students, y'all already know what's going on here. But for the, the general public, now you know what we do in this class. I literally have them on like crystals out now. I was like, oh, well, it's time to bring them out. That's what that's what we're here for today. Um, but I just I'm just so grateful. For this um after dominique shares um and whatever she's going to share that's going to be amazing i know that we have some students that want to spit their collective freedom dreams so um i know we have some of y'all up on deck so we're going to start with um dominique fishback in the performance and then we're going to start spinning some freedom dreams and if folks are in the audience um that are going to be coming in out in a little bit um i would definitely if you have a freedom dream and a vision and you had an experience um that you want to share um you're going to be able to come in and share your freedom dream with us as well dominique let us know when you're when you're ready and we I are will. Ready. yeah um do you need a couple minutes or? I think I'm good. You good? Okay, good. Yeah. Wow. I'm I had to move my laptop, so be up there with me. Oh no, it's good. I'm so honored just to be in the space and just obviously the spirit is moving. Yeah. Okay. I haven't done it in a few days. You can hear this good? Y'all can hear this good? Yes, we can hear you. Gonna talk about my first love once and for all. Gotta get it off my chest now, too much to recall. Finna get them off my back so that I can stand tall. Gonna give you this much air time than nothing at all. Talk about being small and impressionable. Playing all the sports with all the boys just to impress you, just to get next to. You always had some more important women to step to. Like, how could I press you? Being young, you were my daddy. I'm supposed to check you, so I let you go play. Go roam like a stray, forgetting money, knew that chasing honeys was what kept you away. And just like a do when you're not chasing them down, they circle back like where she at, think I'm missing her now. Was it my smile, my little laugh made you remember somehow? Was it your guilt, was it my love, the thought of losing some ground? Oh, I can't see it coming down my eyes, so I gotta let this song cry. I can't see it coming down my eyes, so I gotta let this song cry. I can't see it coming down my eyes, so I gotta let this song cry. Can't see it coming down my eyes, so I gotta let this song cry. I'm getting older now and I can't seem to pick them. I let you in my heart and now my shadow's thicker. You ripped the house apart so now my bite be quicker. I lay that dream to rest when force a father figure. It fucking figures. A coward in the chest, how you profess to love me. Yeah, I'm not just see by blood, you stack them holes above me. Kept lying to my face and now our truth is ugly. Guilty, I let my guard down. Filthy, you jerked us around. Stealthy, you made her a clown. Lied to her face, buried a crown. Caught a new case, uh. So now it's locked jaw. I'm grizzly with that roar, I'm raw. Verbal assassin at your door, no more. I can't see it coming down my eyes, so I gotta let this song cry. I can't see it coming down my eyes, so I gotta let this song cry. I can't see it coming down my eyes, so I gotta make this song cry. I can't see it coming down your eyes, so I gotta let this song cry. Chasing steady, running from myself, I can't face my triggers. Trying to be loved, I'm trying to be loved, I'm desperate. Trying to be whole, I'm burying my soul, I get it. Marathon's in the wrong direction. So I'm crying cause the mirror repelled my reflection. Darkest night of the soul, so I'm destined. Yeah, been learning these lessons. Trying to be still, I'm ready for real confession. Trapped in ideal societal pill, I'm stressing. Heavenly Father, please provide your most healing prescription so I can know what I'm missing. Turn water to wine like Jesus was sipping. Moves into vines, divining your time, no kidding. Turn pennies to dimes, set free with these rhymes I'm spitting. Yeah, that's a pivot. Switching lanes so I can say that I did it. I was drowning in spirit. And now I'm blessed just to share it. 
I can't see it coming down my eyes, so I gotta let this song cry. I can't see it coming down my eyes, so I gotta let this song cry. Yeah, I see it coming down your eyes, so I gotta let this song cry. I can't see it coming down my eyes, so I gotta let this song cry. Wow. Absolutely divine. Thank you. Wow. And so you said Dark Night of the Soul? <laughs> what? <laughs> My car is called the Dark Night, by the way. Um, okay. Yes, because I have been in this Dark Night of the Soul, right? And what does it mean to kind of be, be that phoenix rising? <laughs> You know, that literally was beautiful and took all of our breath away, like chills, all of that. And so the record deal is when? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I mean, uh, you know, just let us know because we're going to be buying it ASAP. Um, so if you had to think about your freedom dream, I know you you spit, you're an MC. I'm going to share with you my vision. So it started out and it was really like this idea that I wanted to viciously attack. And then I was like, listen, I'm not viciously attacking nothing. I'm in, I'm tired of learning lessons through pain and suffering. I'm tired. Yes. I done did that. You know, I want to learn things through ease and flow. Right. And so I decided that I no longer wanted to dismantle. There's people doing that work. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people there and they're doing great work. You know, there's people that need to lay the foundation. Yes. But you and I, we are those freedom dreamers that are embodying that, liber embodying that liberation. And we already see that, which where we already are. And I've been saying this over and over again. Harriet Tubman said her people are free. Not that they will be free. Right. And so my, my vision was initially to viciously attack the detrimental practices and policies that disadvantage the poor and people of color. And then I, I, that was just it, right? And that was way back when I was a little, you know, young minded and I didn't really know all the things. But now my vision is through ease and flow to shift those detrimental practices and policies that disadvantage the poor, black, indigenous, people of color, and queer folks in housing, education, employment, and the environment. And I do this through artistic expression, education, and building community, right? And so that's where I shifted, right? So I should be able to spit that and that's when my students should be able to spit it. So they, they, they about to come with it. And I would love for you, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just speak to us what your freedom dream is. Cause you kind of been telling us through our story, you're an embodiment of it. But I just would love for you to talk about your freedom dream before we hit it to our students. My freedom dream. What do you want to shift? What do I want to shift in the world you mean? Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, um, there's a lot of social constructs that we that we believe. I mean, even to the point of like age, right? Like I'm about to be 30 in March, and um, I uh, when I played Robin and Project Power was 16, and everybody found that I was 29. They were, everybody was like in a like oh my god, but there was a lot of a lot of women, a lot of people who wrote me and said, oh my god, thank you because I thought I was too old to act. I thought I was too old to do whatever, and um, I've always wanted to learn music and play piano, and I just started in 2019, really, wow. you know, and um, and so so in that sense, I think that I want I want to shift our idea of what it what age means and what it means to have uh, dreams. Wow. Yeah, I turned 37 this year. Nice. When? Yeah. What's your sign? I'm a Scorpio, October 30th. And oh my, my sign is so full of Scorpio. Someone was just telling me recently, they pulled it up. I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to text it to you when we get off. They were like, why you got Scorpio all in your chart? You got 
some Sagittarius and some Capricorn, but it's like everywhere, Scorpio. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna have some real talks. Um, yeah, but thank you for sharing. I want, before we shift over to our students, talking to you about our freedom dreams, they know what we're about to do. So you're gonna get ready. We're gonna thank you, bomb <laughs> you. Oh, okay. All right, so everybody unmute your mics. And five, six, seven, eight, and thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you. you. appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's just great to see you. Right. Right. It's such a gift. It's oh, such a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much of our vision. Thank you. 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 Thank you guys. You are you guys are, are a gift to me too. So I, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm gonna go off because I've been doing this press stuff a long, a long time, if that's okay. Oh yeah, yeah, you can take your video off and then our students are gonna be speaking through you. And um, thank you so much. So guess freedom dream spit, Amari. Let let Dominique hear you. I got you. All right. Um I want to shift our world towards unbridled passion, honesty, energy, care, and empathy for one another. I want a world where knowledge is open and free flowing and rooted in radicalism and love. I hope to start living and manifesting the shift within my own life in hopes of sparking the same sentiments within others around me. What's your freedom dream? Nice. I want to use the power of digital art, film, and storytelling to universalize radical empathy and honesty in the digital age, centering Black women along the methodologies of radical healing and love. What's your freedom dream? I want to create new social norms that uplift Black people and create equitable changes in economic systems, education, and the environment. I want to use spaces of love and healing to educate non-Black people while displacing the burden of education from the Black individual. What's your freedom dream? I seek liberation that is total across class, gender, and sexuality without self-interest or categorization. I wish to use my skills as a writer and public speak speaker to disseminate radical true histories in, a, in an accessible manner. I seek to retain the courage to seek the freedom of those who seek my destruction. I want to create spaces for marginalized peoples to reclaim the cultural, political, and social practices that have been stolen from us under the guise of civilization. I seek to rebuild our civilization through the oratory and other skills I possess without hesitation or apology. What's your freedom dream? I want to move the Black female body away from the predetermined role that one needs to accept the oppressive rhetoric of a strong Black woman. I want to normalize our pain and allow us to heal. My medium is through making the literal words of radical Black feminists intertwine in the present Black girl experience through personal accounts of Black girls at Dartmouth paired with photographs of their eyes. I want to normalize that we are not alone in healing. I want us to be in love with the fight, to be unconditionally loved. What's your freedom dream? My vision is to embody and spread unconditional love that nourishes and heals to shift me and the people I interact with into a lived freedom grounded in systems, thought, and ways of being in time with each other, with the land that we build together. I don't have the answers to create a new world, but I approach this work with honesty, radical joy, openness, and vulnerability. I look to my communities, especially Black leaders, for where I should use my skills in science, math, writing, conversation, and organizing my access to wealth and privilege. What's your freedom dream? Is it Trump? Whose freedom dream is up? Or did they leave? We supposed to be spinning like hot fire. Come on, who, who, who's lagging? I'll go next. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. It is the acceptance of fear and the release of it. It is accepting thy neighbor. It is knowing thy neighbor. It is loving thy neighbor. Even when I am thy neighbor, it is when I am my community and the community is me. It is the reclamation of the freedom that I always had in me. Beautiful, beautiful. Has everyone gone? Rocket. Um, I want to bring joy to others through artistic performance in theater, film, and TV, and help st tell stories that work to shift culture to be more equitable and just along lines of race, gender, sexuality, and class. I hope to find beauty, peace, and love within myself in order to better serve others and help them feel and recognize it within themselves. That's beautiful. Folks, if you've already gone, go ahead and type your freedom dream. I know y'all have it typed up. Put it in the chat. And so folks who weren't able to hear it can then see it. 
Um, yeah, so is that everyone in the room that's willing to say their freedom dream? Um, we're gonna open it up. So there's gonna be a link that's gonna go in our chat and whoever wants to come in that's been in this um, experience with us has an opportunity to share their freedom dream with us. Um, Dominique, I know that you have had a very, very long day, um, but I just wanna just thank you. And I have some crystals on the way to you. So oh. you know, <laughs> thank you. So I was just looking at them. I was like, oh, I know which one she needs. Um, but yeah, so as you heard my students and their freedom dreams, what we do in the class is they all start with their individual vision. And then that's the process of getting to know who you really are. Because that's something that this society does not allow for. They tell you you have to go to this school. They tell you what love is supposed to be with the Disney movies. They tell you all the things. And, and especially when love is the only thing that's real and we think it's a Disney movie or a marriage, that is, to me, one of the most insidious things that they could have done mm. because you don't know what true love is. Mm. What true, oh my gosh. What true, unconditional love is. That's my journey right now. It's mine too. Yeah. <laughs> my, my students are tired of hearing me talking about a free love without condition, a love that the true lesson and the true gift from God is that spiritual growth in those lessons. You know, and that's where I'm, I'm, I am right now in the journey. And so understanding that we did um, my class, I was asked to do the Martin Luther King speech, um, which is the Freedom Dreams book. Um, Robin D.G. Kelly, it began because he did the Martin Luther King speech at Dartmouth. It's like a huge thing. And then 20 years later, I was asked to do that same speech and he's my mentor. And so I instead said, I didn't want to be a charismatic leader and I didn't want to talk about MLK like everybody else you can go google it and instead i had my students do it with me mm -hmm. and we were talking about what's the difference between um how some people sometimes spiritually bypass you know that that um that phrase yet when people spiritually bypass it's when they'll tell you like you know just hope for it to be better just manifest not recognizing that there are real conditions like material conditions and things that are really happening. But also when you're thinking, when you're manifesting, there's actual action that's happening too. You know, you're not saying you want this to happen, but not visualizing, but not setting yourself in the right frequency. You're not also thinking about all the things that you don't have all the time. There's an action that has to happen there. And that's kind of what my students, they do this community with me. And so they go from their individual um, projects or their individual collective individual vision to a collective vision and project and then we have this huge gathering and so in this process there are community organizers and you know there's no difference between the activism that you do you know and the activism that I do we don't we can't afford to be called what what is activism at this point what is celebrity activism? What is career activism? We all have to do our part in the shift. And something that's really, really key is that sometimes our purpose is couched in our fears is what we also often talk about. You know, like you may be afraid, like I hate public speaking. I never want to be no celeb. I was, I was a little beauty pageant when I was younger. I had to do like, you know, the John Bernay Ramsey and the Tylers and Tierras all when I was younger. And I was just like, I don't never want to be in the entertainment industry, you know, and then George and all of them, I'm, I'm seeing what they do. And I'm like, no, thank you. And then here I am having to be a professor and do all these talks and talk all these places. And I realized that, yes, my fear of public speaking and speaking to people I had to push through it because I was a part of my destiny, right? And how, you know, being brave enough, being vulnerable enough to have these conversations about our freedom dreams is how we're going to I'm like, no, thank you. Oh, somebody uh, wanted to say something. Oh, never mind. Um, is kind of the point of how we're going to shift society. So I just thank you so much for, for being here. If you have any... Um, other things to say. Now we're kind of like opening up the space and we have about 15 more minutes so people can share their freedom dreams if they're, you know, we opened it up to the audience. And I know you are extremely tired. So we trying to get you up out of here. Yes. Um, and just thank you for being in the space. Or uh, And just, if there's anything you wanna say right now, this is the time. No, I'm just really, I'm really thankful to have been able to come here today and, and share 
what I'm learning, what I'm experiencing in real time as I'm learning and experiencing it uh, with you guys. So appreciate it. Appreciate you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. So is there anybody else that wanted to say something? Of course, I got to my last 5%. So I'm going to go and Okay, Rocket, go right ahead. I'm going to charge my computer. Go um, ahead. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. I'm really just like so overwhelmed by how lucky I feel right now to, to get to see you and speak to you. Um, and wow, I, and like, thank you so much for, for the work that you do and the energy that you bring, that you've brought to this classroom and that you bring to the work that you do. And um, I, I just had a question kind of from the beginning um, about, uh, you know, you mentioned that each year has a theme for you or a word that you like to think of. And I would love to know, you know, especially given how uncertain um, all of like, time is now um and and given what happened last year like what your theme is for this year and um I, I would also love to know if you have any advice for those of us who care about this work and want to do this work in the same way that you do um it, through the arts if, if you have any advice for for us yeah thank you. um thank you first of all your name is really cool i remember pe peeping i was like i don't even rock it that's really cool um uh well this year i made it my divine feminine year uh, so which is why I talk about the divine feminine baths and stuff like that and learning about divine feminine allows me to understand balance between the divine masculine that I have in myself and, and all those other things and really learning how to receive right because I feel like um, for the first what 29 years of my life I've been heavily in a divine masculine because of where I'm from and because of Ooh, the okay. industry the industry that I'm trying to occupy, right? So I feel like I have to be, you know, uh, a go-getter, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, like this. And finally, I'm at a point where I'm like, or I'm ready to just receive and kind of lay back and believe that the seeds that I've planted in manifestation are already done. Um, I think before it was very hard to believe that they were already done. Um, and now I'm able to say, like the other day was... Um, it was like a new moon, right? And I was gonna man uh, manifest something new for the new moon. And I stopped and I realized, I said, Dom, you're gonna be manifesting the same thing. So just just chill and let them come. Of sure, new things are gonna come to mind, but at this point for the new moon, because I'm so used to just manifesting for the new moon, I was almost gonna manifest the same thing again and again. And I was like, it's cool, just go to sleep give thanks to go to sleep. And I allowed myself to not try to manifest something because there's there's things that's in the queue right now, just waiting to come and I'm um, making room for them. So um, I was uh, able to allow myself to pause. And in terms of doing uh, the work, uh, med like meditation, I can't say it enough because it really does allow you to understand yourself more. And when you understand your authentic self, then you could bring your authentic self to people, right? Like how, how beautiful would it be if we could all live in our like divine authentic selves? And I, I really try to do that with every interview now. I pray for them, just like, please let me be able to articulate myself clearly, um, sit in my humility and, every, and, and the things that you will have me to say. And, uh, and I think by being able to lean in my authenticity, that maybe I can spark something in the in the ear of somebody who's listening, and then therefore I'm um the work that I'm trying to do that I was made to do I'm doing it anyway even if I can't see it in the physical yet. Absolutely, same. So I had to come inside because my computer was dying, um, but you know it's it's beautiful now. You see me inside. Yeah. Um, no, it's similar like we are on a very similar path and journey and I'm so grateful for your authenticity I'm from South Central Los Angeles I'm a first generation high school graduate out of my immediate family the wow. first and my mother and my father's line of um you know PhD you know so I definitely understand what it is to always be in your masculine and I, I'm in the same exact journey of learning to, to, to rest in the divine feminine and knowing what it means to give and receive. You know, I'm always giving so much out, but what does it mean to just rest and know that you are more than enough? 
Mm-hmm. You are deserving. And, you know, I've been rooting for you so much. I'm so even, I, I know it's a divine appointment that you're here. Cause I was like, she on Vogue. She on, mm-hmm. you know, about to do something with Tracy Ellis. All <laughs> okay. I'm like, I don't know if she gonna make it, you know, but I was even telling Marcia, I was like, I don't know if she gonna make it, but I knew that there was something special, not even just for, to unlock in the both of each other. Like you are presenting the mirror to me of myself because we are all mirror reflections um but i just want you to know that i am so proud of you i am very proud because you are also showing me in this dark night of, of the soul you know that we can open up and have and have these conversations and to know like what you said i stopped manifesting as well i usually go and write down even my son we wrote write down stuff we talk, like it was all like it is what it is it's enough. And I don't know if you heard when I was thank you bombing you, your existence is enough. Just thank you for your existence. And so I'm gonna stop talking. We only have about you know 10 more minutes and I would love to hear if anyone else has anything. If not, we're just gonna um, do a final breath. Amari, that's your affirmation? You are more than enough or which, what's your affirmation, Amari? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah. It's the uh, yeah, like I'm I'm here, and that's more than enough. And that is more than enough. Yes. Yeah, so, Dominique, actually, last summer, I had this like I never really thought of myself as clairvoyant. You know, the different type of clair senses. Have you ever? Okay, yes. Yeah, so there's clair audience when you can just hear things. Clair sentient when you like you know if you feel things or you know clair cognizance you just know something. Clair tangents when you can taste or or feel. Um, a clair gustance if you can taste. You just get these messages from you know spirit from God. And I had a dream where I was just like, huh. I saw people dancing all over the world and they actually shifted and I felt them like kind of quantum leap into another reality. And I was crying in it because it was so beautiful that I initially thought I was like dreaming until I put it on Facebook and there were so many people that are just like, I want to do it, I want to do it. So we created this 28 day uh, global dance meditation for black liberation. And so we talked about the process of what it means to my dogs coming up here because I'm um, what it means to love and, and what it means to unpack all of the different ty- Hello, divine. We are almost at the end. Hello. Okay, good. I went- <laughs> Divine's like, what are we talking about? And, and what this process in the 28 day um, global dance meditation for black liberation, we have some folks that were on that project is that we within weeks got together all of the different ways that we look at our shadow. We look at, you know, self-compassion. We had meditations and all these things. I'm going to send it to you, but it takes 28 days to build a new habit. So what if we took 28 days of pretty much essentially getting rid of all of the symptoms of white supremacy and all the things that we're trying to shift and get light enough so that we can quantum leap into that new reality. And like all the things that you're saying in this talk is kind of like similar to that vision where you say something and then something is created out of that. And I taught that 28 day Global Dance Meditation for Black Liberation at Harvard and some of the students in here. Now it's a text. And I see something within you, like all of this stuff, the spirit stuff that you're talking, you're going to make it accessible to people. So I don't know if you have any like ideas about how to make. That's my last question. Yeah. Um, Have you been thinking? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because I felt like when I went to Pace, a lot of times I was the only black person in my class, Pace University in New York. And um, I realized that I, I won homecoming queen when I was at Pace. Okay. And, and, I, and, I, and it was, this is for a bigger story than it's been like, I don't homecoming. But it, it was the idea because then I wrote Subverted, which is my one woman show about the destruction of black identity in America. Yeah, yeah. And I said, if I, don't, if I don't tell the story, then I'm not servicing the people from neighborhoods that come from like, come from neighborhoods like mine who don't get the opportunity to go to a private university but also the people who came to this school to learn about people who did not grow up like them the same way I was doing 
So if I don't tell a story, if I shy away from this truth, then I'm not helping anybody. And so for an hour and 20 minutes, this predominantly white university is going to have to sit in my truth and in people and, and truth the people who I, I grew up with. Um, and I, I say that to say I felt like I was a liaison, right? Like a link, like a, a bridge. So um, yeah, so and then I and then I and I think about the spirituality stuff and um uh, and how it could be accessible to people because I because in myself what I love is like I'm I love Jay-Z. You know what I'm saying? I love Brooklyn, I love rap, I love reggae, I love spoken word, I love blackness, you know what I'm saying? I love, but I, I love fucking new girl. You know, I love all of these things that I that I love that I could find. That's why I call myself the heroine with a thousand faces, right? Because I always wanted to be able to to um, transform into to, to different whatever I was needed, however I was needed in my artistry and from and from my mission. And so, uh, yes, I've been thinking about that lately. I, I see that for you. And I would love to, I would talk to you more about it, but it's so crazy that you call yourself a liaison because that's exactly what I call myself in the movement, an arts and culture liaison. And mm -hmm. we were just before you got on talking about the liminal space, this idea where we are in between both worlds, you know, we're, we're in between those, you know, from the hood girls to now we have a certain level of status and privilege. And mm -hmm. what that means is to hold the both or hold dimensions, hold a higher dimension in the spiritual enlightenment that we found and to be able to lift our other folks up in a, in a very um, real way where people can understand it. So mm -hmm. that is where we are right now in this space. I'm gonna have everybody um, just take a deep breath. So if we can um, spotlight everybody, we're gonna- Sorry, there's a, new girl there's a new girl conversation kind of happened just now and it, it took me out. Somebody said, Winston forever. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Nick and Jess for always. I love Cece and Schmidt too. Uh, yes. I love y'all. Y'all are so funny in the chat. The chat is popping, by the way, y'all. Yeah, it's popping. I was like, oh shit. I felt like I was back in. Sorry, I forgot. I felt like I was back in. Uh, I felt like I was back in in, in school. Like when you get a note and you post, I was like, oh shit. No, that's what we do here. That's what we do here. You're always in the chat, and and to and do know that you know this is our black arts movement class um as well as i have a class called rituals of black breath black performance and resistance and we also have harvard black arts movement to black lives matter but i'll be teaching rituals of breath black performance and resistance next quarter as well as black radical tradition you are always welcome into my class karen has been in my class you know she'll be teaching in april you know george and marcia and angie they've all you know been oh, able no. to have these things so you know the point of my class is to make it accessible and make it open and so always feel free if you want to have this kind of experience just come back um but i just want to thank you um okay. if we can have gallery view so that I can see everyone's faces if your video hasn't been on and you don't mind putting your video on we're going to take one final deep breath together and we are going to take dominique off into the world with so much love um, we've already thank you bombed you but what we're going to do is we're just going to close our eyes together if everyone you can just lower your eyes and just follow your natural breathing and we're going to take three breaths together so the first one is going to be a gentle breath you're going to breathe in and just breathe it out the second one you're going to breathe in a little bit deeper and then on the third one i'm going to count you in and you're going to breathe in as deeply as you can all of the greatness that happened today and then you're going to release all that does not serve that you all ready all right so one two three breathe in gently and release again one two three a little bit deeper breathe in and exhale now let's take a pause now this one we're going to breathe in as deeply as we possibly can on three one two three and breathe it in and release vocally <sighs> Yes. All right. Bye, y'all. Dominique, yes, I will hit you yes. up. Yes, Bye. Yes, 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 yes. We can yes. stop streaming and then my class, I'll be here for a little bit longer. 